Iron Lake. J-Rock has come back to you too. Oh, what is happening in here and in with the millions? At millions of J-Rock's fans from all over the world, J-Rock is here. And you're here with J-Rock. Because J-Rock came across this video and he decided he wanted to do a reaction to it. There was this once uh, famous worldwide lead. Many of you remember it. Uh, J-Rock damn sure remembers it. And one. And one mixtape. Uh, that was, you know, they started out, I think they started out with uh, Skip to My Lou, Ray for Austin, who played in the NBA. Then they went on to Sick Witted and Hot Sauce or Hot Sizzle. Then they had the main event, the prime objective. Um, they had Escalade. Um, they had a lot of different. Uh, they had 50, because uh, he had a 50 inch vertical. But, so I, and I've always, and it just, it didn't dawn on the great one until I saw this on YouTube. Whatever happened to Anne One? Because I remember the last I remember them, they were doing, I used to take the, 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 the Anne One mixtape tour where they would go on the road and try to find, you know, new members to add to the group, right? Uh, they had, they, I remember they had Spider, and then I remember the Professor, you know, those were some hype games. Because uh, I remember that, but I just, I don't know what happened to it. So, I guess this video is going to tell us exactly what happened to Ann One. Let's check this out, man, because I'm, I got to admit, I'm curious about this. What what happened to Ann One? You guys remember Ann One, right? Yeah, it was that company that made those clothes, shoes, and those basketball mixtapes that was really started by them. And it promoted street ballers like Hot Sauce, Skip to My Lou, and The Professor. So what the hell happened to them? I mean, they were like the number two basketball shoe seller only after Nike. So we're going to look back at the history of N1 and see what went wrong. So before we get straight into that, make sure you like, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for the culture so you won't miss any of my videos. And let's get into the vid, man. Hey, man, it's your boy YG, aka Ngala. And today we're basically going to be talking about the rise and fall of N1 basketball. So let's take it all the way back to 1993. N1 one was started by these three guys and they were only graduate students at the University of Pennsylvania so they started selling and one t-shirts out of the back of their car and they instantly became hot I mean everybody was buying them and the shirts contained trash talks and slogans like pass save yourself the embarrassment don't laugh you're next or even my games tighter than your mom's wig <laughs> And the t-shirt started off in Foot Locker and within the second year of launching, it reached 1,500 stores across America. And in the mid of 1996, Anne finally got their first spokesman. And you might know him. His oh, name yeah. was Stephon That's Marbury. Fine. With the Marbury signing, N1 launched its first pair of basketball sneakers and finally expanding their brand into the footwear category. Marbury was also named to the all-rookie team in 1997, so this was more exposure to N1. Hey, for the world famous Wake Up Show with King Tech and DJ Revolution, and y'all about to view the N1 mixtape on video, coming to you live. In late 1998, a video tape was containing streetball stunts was delivered to N1 by Marquise Kelly. He was the coach of the Benjamin Cardozo High School team in Queens, New York. And the tape that he sent had low quality, poor resolution, and it was hard to hear anything. But it featured a street baller by the name of Rafer Alston, aka Skip to My Lou. At the time, Alston was a student at Fresno State who had entered the 1998 NBA draft. The videotape will soon be known as the Skip Tape, which was referring to Austin's streetball nickname, Skip to My Lou. And that's pretty much how he got it. He would later sign on with N1. So in 1999, N1 shot their first series of commercials and print ads incorporating NBA players like Dara Armstrong, Toby Bailey, and Miles Simon. And when the traditional market 
marketing campaign proved unsuccessful. A strategy was formed to use the skip tape. Yeah, it was edited that. and reprinted into 50,000 copies. And over the next eight weeks, it was spread across basketball camps, clinics, and record labels. The tape will become the first mixtape and quickly made Rafer Austin into a celebrity. And when N1 became a product partner with Foot Action, this strategy evolved into a national program. And it started in the summer of 1999. A free N1 mixtape was given with any purchase. And roughly around 200,000 tapes were spread in the span of three weeks, making this promotion one of the most successful in US retail history. Filmmakers were then sent across the country to capture and find the next streetball legend. So fast forward to the 2000s, N1 began to recruit more and more NBA players to wear their product. And this was a major power play in competing with bigger brands such as Nike and Adidas. Players like Latrell Sprewell, Kevin Garnett, mm -hmm. and Jamal Crawford brought N1 into the national spotlight and helped them secure shelf space in major footwear retailers such as Foot Locker and Foot Action. By the 2001 season, N1 was second only to Nike in market share among NBA endorsees. And this was a big part of them soon becoming the second largest basketball brand in the US only eight years after their establishment. N1 is also famous for the shoe known as Tai Chi, famously worn by Vince Carter during the 2000 Slam Dunk Contest. And this is where he put one Bad of the greatest memo. NBA Slam Woo! Dunk Contest showings of all time. And N1 ever. summer tours had already been going on from 1999, but in 2002, with the release of Mixtape 3, N1 officially expanded their annual streetball tours into the Mixtape Tour. Legendary streetballers such as Hot Sauce and The Professor would go from court to court to challenge the greatest streetballers in one-on-ones. And this entertained fans and provide much footage for future mixtapes. The streetballers who prevailed through the very end of the summer tours would receive endorsement deals from N1. From 2002 through 2008, the tours were televised live on ESPN under the name Streetball and competed with ESPN Sports Center for the highest ratings. The summer tours began in America but soon branched into more than 30 countries. This will give N1 international fame and promoting the sale of their products in 130 different countries and territories. One of the most prominent appearances of N1 sneakers, aside from Vince Carter's dunk contest, was when Detroit Pistons Chauncey Billups took home the MVP honors during the 2004 NBA Finals and was wearing the N1 Rises. The mid-top sneakers clean and aggressive look matched Chauncey Billups' game perfectly. In the Rises, Chauncey Billups would average 21 points and 5 rebounds in the series leading the Pistons to their first championship in 14 years and picking up the MVP award in the process. And one apparel and footwear first appeared in the digital arena on Street Hoops in 2002. But in 2006, the brand officially made its entrance into the category partnering with Ubisoft to release its first video game. And one Grammarly does more than catch errors. With Grammarly, you can find really good, no, perfect words that make your writing sharp or explicit. Streetball. The yeah. game featured a story mode mirroring an N1 Streetball series on ESPN, where players were able to create their own basketball player and enter him in the N1 mixtape tour in order to get a contract with the N1 team. Players were able to create their own stylized trick move and pull them off with a two analog stick system called Eyeball. The games were available on both PlayStation 2 and Xbox and received positive reviews. So fast forward in 2009, and one's longest endorsee, Rayford Austin, aka Skip to My Lou, would lead the Orlando Magic to the NBA Finals versus Kobe Bryant and the Los Angeles Lakers. Skip wore the N1 Cubics throughout the 09 season, all the way through the NBA Finals. After another one of his highest scoring playoff games, Dwight Howard said this about Skip. He wasn't Ray for Austin tonight. He was the playground legend Skip to my loop. When he plays like the playground legend, he's tough to guard. The Magic lost his series in five games, but Skip's presence in the finals brought a great acclaim to N1, as his N1 background story was covered numerous times in the papers. So now we're on to the 2010s. Following a short hiatus, the N1 Mixtape Tour will come back in 2010, now known as N1 Live Streetball Tour. The tour continued to expand globally as the N1 team toured the world, and there were meetings 
success against most international teams. They remain undefeated outside the U.S. and they lost to Puerto Rico Street Ballers in 2012. Over the years, N1 has changed hands a few times. First being bought out by American Sporting Goods in 2005, and on August 25, 2011, N1 was sold to Galaxy Brands, a brand management company based in New York. The company later merged with Sequential Brands Group, a publicly traded brand management company, but the personnel managing N1 never changed. Under Sequential, N1 has reconnected with its roots, signing marquee NBA players and sponsoring tournaments worldwide. In November 2012, N1 signed then Pacer Lance Stevenson to an endorsement deal. Lance Stevenson had won the New York City Basketball Championships in all four years of high school and became New York State's all-time leading scorer in high school basketball, named Mr. New York Basketball after his senior year. He would soon sign a multi-year deal with the Indiana Pacers, with N1 signing him during his rookie season. Born ready fit the N1 streetball personality with his aggressive never back down attitude, which was put on national display during the 2014 NBA Conference Finals. Stevenson, who had led the league in triple doubles that year, and the Pacers past the Knicks in the round prior was paired against LeBron James in the Miami Heat. From trash talking to mind games to even blowing in LeBron's ear at one point, Lance Stevenson did whatever he can do to get into LeBron's head. In celebration of their 20 year anniversary, the brand hosted the N1 Labor Day Summer Remix, a $100,000 winner take all basketball Woo! tournament in <laughs> August 2013. The tournament took place in Temple University in Philadelphia and also included $10,000 dunk contest. So on to 2015, paying homage to Brooklyn's streetball culture, N1 partnered with Slam Magazine to host numerous events surrounding the 2015 NBA All-Star Game. But yeah, pretty much after that, it was dead. And it pretty much been dead ever since Sequential bought them out. And one was Woo! never the same. Under Armour starts to climb up with Steph Curry as the reigning MVP. Then Adidas had Derrick Rose and James Harden. And Nike pretty much have Jordan and every single popular athlete. It was just too much for N1. I mean, their top sponsor was Lance Stevenson. So you know that was not gonna last long. And it was not a player shoe. N1 real success was a street shoe. So you can just say they just stopped being cool. Especially when Vince Carter went from a superstar to a bench player. Kevin Garnett retired. Stefan Marbury left the NBA to play in China. They had literally no one to hang on to. And this sucks because every kid wants to shoot threes like Curry, but they will never know the time where everybody hey, cares oh, more about okay. handles and embarrassing opponents than actually scoring. I can say the last time it actually felt like street ball was during the NBA lockout season when KD dropped 66 points in the Rucker Park. But aside from that, I just feel like street ball is just a thing in the past. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. And tell me if y'all think N1 will ever be revived or anything close to what it was. So make sure you like, share, subscribe, and show love to the YG gang. And I'm out, bruh. And if you're still here, here are two videos you will enjoy. Well, J-Rock says this. I was a big fan of N1. I remember watching their uh, N1 mixtape tour. When they found the professor, they found Spider, uh, some of the other great dunkers, the air up there. The first dude I ever seen do a 720 dunk, uh, which was sick. They, I think they shut the game down. They're like, bro, we don't even, we don't need to play no more. This dude just did a 720. Um, and I'm still waiting for somebody to do that in the dunk contest, NBA dunk contest. I'm waiting. I always thought, man, bring some and one game uh, dunkers in here, man. Some street dunkers in here. Let them go up against some NBA dunkers, man. These street dunkers will put a lot of these NBA dunkers to shame. Now, I'm not saying they better basketball players, but as far as dunking, oh, man, that would put on a show. Get the best dunkers from the NBA against the best dunk. Man, that would put on a show right there. Million dollar grand prize, make it happen. You see some of the best dunks you can don't think you'd ever see but i was a big fan of and one and uh yeah i mean afterwards like he said you know a lot of their um you know players that they signed just couldn't compete with steph lebron katie mellow 
uh, Russ, Harden, you know, Dame, those kind of guys, you know, Kobe, they just weren't with and one like that, you know, but man, I don't, I don't think it'll ever get back there, you know, unless, unless one of the, the stars like a LeBron type guys, they actually start investing in that and you see more guys getting signed. But outside of that, nah, man, um, they just couldn't get, keep a lot of the top guys, but it was fun while it lasted. They had a great run. And uh, I know the professor, you see him out there every once in a while on YouTube, you know, doing a little, you know, basketball, dressing up as Spider-Man or whoever, getting out there and hooping. But, yeah, it was fun while it lasted. Post your comments down below. And let Jay Rock know what you thought of his reaction to this video. No rhyme intended on that line. And if you enjoyed the Great Ones reaction, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and share. Uh, also, if you got a reaction request, Drop it down in the comment section below or on the People's Facebook fan page. And if I choose your request, I will give you a shout out right here on the People's channel. All right. Lastly, hit that bell so that you can be notified that it is time to be electrified. Thank you for joining J-Rock. Until next time. Mamba, Gigi, and Wakanda forever. Hear the smell. Wow. J-Rock. Eat.